I'm your host, Locum23. You're joining me for Mother of the Year, Chapter 12, When It Rains. Machines beep and hum softly as you sit by your sleeping daughter's hospital bed, her small hand clasped in yours. The door behind you opens and Levy stops, steps in, holding a travel mug and a bouquet of flowers. He shuts the door softly behind him. Hey, I ran into Nico and Thomas in the lobby. They said you're uh, spending the night here. That's the plan. I just... I need to be with her. I figured as much. Here, I brought you some tea. Gratefully accept the mug, inhaling the comforting herbal aroma in her bed, so he shifts uncomfortably in her sleep, the tubes from her IV and oxygen mask sliding over the thin blanket. How's she doing? Better. The doctor says she's out of the woods, but it was a close call. If we'd been just a few minutes slower... Your voice sticks in your throat, tears threatening to spill from your eyes uh, that are already red and sore. Levy sets the flowers down on Zoe's bedside table and puts a hand on your shoulder. But we are. You got to her in time, and she's gonna be alright. You, uh, ever figure out what, uh, triggered the attack? Wordlessly, you pull out the wrapper and you found in Zoe's hand. Levy takes the wrapper from you, his expression growing dark as he reads the brand name. There were a ton of those at the snack table. Zoe probably didn't bother to check the ingredients, since Kai, since Guy's the one that dropped them off. That dumb son of a... He makes a move for the door, and you barely manage to grab hold of his sleeve. Levy, don't. You'll just give Guy more ammunition. What? So I'm just supposed to let this slide? No, you're supposed to help us prove that Guy is unreasonable one, not hand him his case on a silver platter. He pauses as Zoe shifts in her bed, eyes half opening. She lifts her head, squinting in your direction. Mom? Levy? All anger drains out of Levy in an instant, and he steps forward to take Zoe's hand. Hey, Rocket, we're uh, right here. How you doing? I feel weird. Sleepy. Her head drops onto the pillow and she drifts back into unconsciousness. It's been like this for hours. She'll wake up for a little, and then... You sigh, rubbing your tired eyes. Levy takes a seat in the chair beside you, still carefully holding Zoe's hand. Hey, you, you know none of this is your fault, right? Yeah. Sure. I mean, if you're an amazing mom, it's always lucky to have someone like you and watching out for her. And I want you to know that I'm always here if you need me. Seriously, just tell me how I can help you feel better. Right now, I could use a kiss. Lovey smirks, but his uh, gaze is tender as he leans over the arm of your chair. I mean, if you think it would help... I really do. He reaches out, cupping your cheek in one hand and your lips meet in a kiss that's surprisingly gentle. Closing your eyes, you feel the warmth of the kiss spread through you, dulling the sharp edges of your worries. When your lips part, Levy rests his forehead against yours for a long moment. I'm never gonna get tired of that. I sure hope not. Thanks, Levy. I'm glad we don't have to go through this alone. Never. You've got a lot of good people on your team, Dara. We've got your bag. After sitting with a, you a while longer, Levy heads home and you settle in for the long night. The soft sunlight drifts through the windows, rousing you from your uneasy sleep. You hear a rustle of fabric and glance over to see Zoe stirring in her hospital bed, eyes slowly opening. You move to kneel beside her. Good morning, sleepyhead. How are you feeling? Okay, I guess. Are we in the hospital? Yes, we are. You had an allergy attack at the panic. 
your picnic. Do you, um, remember? Kinda. I remember eating one of those, um, chewy snack bars and then I started feeling all hot and I couldn't breathe. I'm sorry, I forgot to check the ingredients, Mom. Was it, was it really bad? Be totally honest. I'm not gonna lie, it was a pretty close call. I don't think you've ever had an attack that bad. I was really scared. But we used your injector right away, and that brought us enough time to get you the medical help you needed. So don't worry. You're gonna be just fine. There's no need to be... Stop talking as your voice wavers, hoping Zoe didn't notice. But even as you try to speak again, tears begin to well up in your eyes. You're, you're gonna be fine, so you don't have to be scared. Everything's gonna be... The tears spill down your cheek, exploring your vision. You cover your face with your trembling hands, trying to hold back your sobs. As you try to force yourself to calm down, you feel Zoe's thin arms wrap around your neck. It's okay, Mom. I'm gonna be okay. You don't have to be scared. Zoe, smiling through the tears, you wrap Zoe in a, in a fierce hug. Zoe, how'd you get so brave? Well, you're brave. I learned that through observation. Ladder. Phone buzzes, the screen lights up with a text notification. Hey, hope I'm not waking you up. I just wanted to check in and see how Zoe's doing. She's awake. Seems like she's doing a lot better. Thank goodness. Um, here. I'm gonna give her the phone for a second. Hi, Miss Eco. This is Zoe. Hi, Zoe. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Me too. My IV says... Dexa... Methasonin? Do you know what that is? It's a glucocorticoid. These are used to reduce inflammation in your body. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm gonna give the phone back to my mom, but thanks for checking in on me. You're very welcome. See you in class. Me again. Good god, that's a lot of emojis. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like she's in good spirits. How are you doing? We really didn't get to talk about what happened with Vanessa. Been trying not to think about it, honestly. Just waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'll be there, no matter what. Whatever happens, I'll have your back. I'll fight anyone who tries to mess with you. Oh, my hero. I should go. The doctor will probably be coming by soon. Here's hoping we can take the kiddo home today. Fingers crossed. A little while later, after sending updates to Levy, Thomas, and Guy, you hear a soft knock on the door. Come on in. Zoe's doctor enters the room, smiling, when she sees a Zoe sitting out the bed. I see our little trooper is away. How are you feeling? Not good, I think. I'm gonna have a... Biasific reaction? Well, it's a possibility. You and your mom are gonna need to keep a sharp eye out for more allergy symptoms over the next few days. The doctor examines Zoe and looks over her chart, nodding to herself. Looks to me like you're ready to get out of here. So let's get... Let's just get this thing off. She pulls off Zoe's plastic hospital bracelet and turns to toss it in the trash. They never do that. Let's be honest. No hospital removes your bracelet ever. You usually walk out with it. Wait, do we have to throw it away? Hmm, I suppose not. Did you want to keep it? Well, my mom and I have this board at home where we keep souvenirs and stuff like from important events. You want to commemorate a trip to the hospital. It's a trip where she nearly died and came out winning. Yes. I mean, not really the hospital part, but it'll be a reminder that even if something bad happens, I have people who will jump in and help me. That is a good thing to remember. Keep the hospital bracelet for new beginnings for to make sure Zoe knows she got better. Smiling, the doctor hands the bracelet back to Zoe. I've got to say, I haven't seen many people bounce back this well after a major allergy attack. You're one tough kid. Better than the rest of us. We were full on panicking when we saw her on the ground. No, you weren't. 
you were all so cool when you got to me and called the ambulance right away. You could hear that. Kinda. Everything got sorta of far away like I was falling down a hole. But I could hear Levy on the phone and I heard Thomas calling your name. Well, that's right. He tossed my purse over so I could get your injector. The seeker was there too, right? I thought I felt her holding on to me. My uh, Zoe smiles, reaching out to hold your hand. And I felt you there, Mom. In the park, in the ambulance. Anytime I woke up, I knew you were with me. You squeeze. She squeezes your hand and you squeeze back, trying hard not to cry again. Always. Added Zoe's hospital bracelet to your board. All right then, let's get you home. Why does the music keep abruptly, like, just cutting out before it shifts to something else? A couple days after Zoe's trip to the hospital, you drop by Thomas's office during your lunch break to discuss the custody case. Give it to me straight, counselor. How am I doing? If I were going to be completely honest with the hospital visit and everything this past week hasn't been good for us. How? What? That just makes no sense. Where was Guy during it? Nowhere. Seriously, but... This was all Guy's fault. We know Zoe is allergic to soy, and yet the snacks he brought to the picnic literally had soy protein as the third ingredient. And if you ask me, that was behind beyond real responsible of him. But not everyone will see it that way. Guy didn't give Zoe the snack bar, and he didn't tell her that it was okay to eat. It's unfair, but from the outside, it looks like Zoe got her on your watch. Meanwhile, Guy is covering all her medical bills, and I'm struggling just to afford groceries every week. What the hell am I supposed to do, Thomas? It feels like decks are stacked pretty seriously against me. There might be two decks. The most productive thing you can do right now is keep holding down your jobs, and uh, keep being the best mom in the world. That's me, best mom ever. Hey. You look up, surprised by the term and tone of Thomas's voice. He meets your eyes with intensity. Tara Day, you are the most powerful, committed, and loving parent I have ever met. You inspire me to be a better father to loves. So I don't want to hear any more self-deprecating sarcasm, all right? Thomas... Yes, sir. Thomas flushes slightly, struggling to maintain his stern expression. Um, good. Because if we're going to win, we need to project competence. You check your watch, sighing as you see uh, that your lunch break is almost over. Alright, time to get back to the fashion mines. Give Laz a hug for me. I will. She's been bugging me nonstop about scheduling another hike. Uh, I would love to run off into the woods right now, but I don't think I have any free days from now until ever. Well, what about nights? Luz and I might start making food together one night a week. Uh, maybe you and Zoe could join us? Tonight, we're going to attempt an old family recipe of Pozolo Rojo. We could even turn it into a sleepover if you like. Or for the girls, uh, unless, I mean, we, we, we have a guest room if you'd rather stay close. To, to Zoe, I mean. I think I know what you mean. Cook with Thomas, Luz, and Zoe to make a fun break of your chaotic life. And for a chance to see what those sparks will fly after the kids asleep. Even though literally the guy talks about needing a break and taking things slow, if not at standstill, but... That night, you and Zoe pick up a few groceries and head for Thomas's house. We came bearing chiles. We got, uh, guajillo, ancho, and a few arbo in case you want to get spicy. Super spicy. Arbo chilies can be over 30,000 Scovilles. Ah, we'll have to handle them with care. How about, uh... Are you? Are you good at chopping, Tar? Yeah, no, I'm in charge of chopping. I'm sure there's plenty to go around. Maybe the grown-ups should handle the peppers, though. Okay, well, I get to chop the onions, though. Deal. You remove the seeds from the dried chilies and set them in the hot water to soak. Luz happily chops on onions on while Zoe drains and rinses a can of hominy. What is hominy, anyway? It's like corn, but weird. It's corn that's been nixtamalized. That's a process where the kernels are softened by soaking them in alkali solution. Cool! 
I think the chilies are done soaking. What now? Well, now we blend them into the paste with the garlic and onion. The recipe says the arbol chilies are optional, depending on how spicy you want it. Make it spicy! I don't know. Are you sure you can handle it? I can. I ate two atomic fireballs last Halloween. Keyword last. You sure did, and spent the next half an hour running around the apartment yelling your head off. Oh, leave some on the side. How about this? I'll blend up some extra chili paste, and you can add it later if you, if your soup isn't hot enough. Okay, I'm gonna make mine extra spicy. Me too. Just remember, if you get a stomachache later, you brought this upon yourself. A little while later, you serve up big bowls of steaming soup in the dining room. All right, let's see how we did. You take a big bite as Lawless and Zoe happily load up their bowls with extra chili paste. Mmm. Well, I haven't had the original version, but I think we knocked it out of the park. No arguments here. This uh, really takes me back. Zoe starts bouncing in her seat, fanning her mouth. What do you think, kiddo? It's good, but I like it, but odd. You want some of my milk? It helps with the spicy. Grabs her. Pro offered glass and starts gulping it down laughing you get ready to pour her another one after the girls have gone to bed you and thomas settle in the living room couch to watch an old movie i've got to say it's nice to watch this without a bored nine-year-old making gagging noises every time there's a on-screen kiss oof i'm lucky zoe usually just covers her eyes you let a heavy sigh hugging your knees to your chest it was really nice, the movie, dinner, not having to think about court cases or bills. Yeah, it is. Life is so complicated, and it's nice to be reminded that some things are... He trails off, staring into space for a long moment when he looks up at you as if it's he's decided something simple. He reaches out and gently takes your hand, a question in his eyes. Thomas, can I kiss you? In answer, Thomas gently draws you closer, leaning in to meet your lips with his own. Hmm. Ryan's cradled the back of his head, your fingers twining in the soft strands of his hair as you pull him in, deepening the kiss. Tara. Pull back just a little, looking into his face. Sorry, was that too much? No. His hands grip your shoulders as he stares right into your eyes. I want more, Tara. I want you. Thomas, are you sure? Everything you said a few days ago... He leans forward, his forehead against yours, a very voice barely a whisper. Tara, I haven't felt this sure about anything for a long time. Well then, you should kiss me again. His mouth captures yours eagerly, breathing quickening, and your lips part against his tongue, exploring the inside of his mouth. Mmm. Running softly, Thomas slides both hands along your hips, pulling you into his lap. Ah. Also a moment, looking down into Thomas's gray-blue eyes, he reaches up to cup your cheek with one hand, his face radiating happiness. What's on your mind, Counselor? I just can't believe you're really here. You bend down to pepper more kisses across his face. This is helping. Do you believe it yet? Not quite. Laughing, you kiss him again, the movie forgotten, as the two of you tumble together onto the couch. The next morning, you're woken up by the sounds of footsteps and laughter sounding from the floor above. Yawning, you look around and realize you're still in the living room couch, snuggled up against a still sleeping Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Mm. Sounds like the girls are up. We should probably... You're interrupted by the sound of feet thundering down the stairs. Hey, Dad, it's time for breakfast, and I want what? She stops dead in her track, staring at you and Thomas. Dad, are you... Are you and Zoe's mom... You both shoot upright, shooting, scooting hurriedly away from each other on the couch. Buzz, uh, Tara and I were just... Uh, we were... There's a reasonable explanation for this. It's, uh... You act like you got caught naked, you snuggled trail off completely at a loss. Loz looks at her dad and then back to you and then breaks into a huge grin. Zoe! I found them and they're snuggling! 
Loves wait. But she's gone already, her giggles echoing through the house as she sprints out of the side. Thomas covers his face with his hands, laughing helplessly. Well, that was certainly unplanned. At least we know she approves. Yes, there's, there is that. But more importantly, I believe Laz was about to say something about waffles. Alright, I like your priorities. No, 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 priorities are coffee than waffles. <laughs> Still laughing, the two of you rub the sleep from your eyes and make your way toward the kitchen to start breakfast. The next afternoon, you run into Cynthia outside the school on your way to the PTA meeting. Tora, I'm so glad I called you. How is Zoe doing? Oh, she's fine now. Thank goodness. No more reactions since getting out of the hospital. Oh, thank God. It's so horrible having a little one in the hospital. Gregory had an appendix. Appendix. I don't know. Appendectomy. Oh, get appendicitis last year, and I barely slept for days. Appendectomy. Excuse me. There we go. I'm just glad it wasn't worse. Poor kid's been through a lot lately. I feel like we've uh, had enough excitement to last the rest of the year. Well, lucky you. There's no event planning on the agenda today, so this meeting should be nice and boring. You joke, but a boring meeting sounds uh, like just what I need. As you go and see the FI and seats at the conference table, Vanessa flips casually through her binder. All right, since the science fair is still a ways off, there will be short meeting. Um, unless anyone has any items to add to the agenda. Vanessa pauses suggestively, letting the silence stretch. After a long moment, someone at the back of the room clears their throat. Actually, I wanted to voice some concerns I have about one of the teachers, Miss Matsunaga. Excuse me, what? Last night, my daughter told me that Miss Matsunaga gave a lesson where students used knives and Bunsen burners. And it's a science class. A science class for children. Fourth grade does seem too young to be playing with such dangerous objects. Oh, but I'm sure they're under supervision the whole time. Well, this isn't the first time Miss Matsunaga has gone against school guidelines. She still refuses to equally represent both sides of the vaccine issue in her curriculum. She's been a terrible influence on our daughter. Pesley has a sweet, obedient little angel before she started that class. Now she actually argues with us. She says Miss Matsunaga encourages them to think critically, whatever that means. Not to mention she's been pushing her political views and alternative lifestyle on her kids for years. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Eco is an amazing teacher, and the school is damn lucky to have her. Tell me. Just what does alternative lifestyle mean? Oh, well, you know, the edgy clothes, the haircut. Don't forget the motorcycle. I don't want my daughter thinking it's normal for women to do that kind of dangerous activity. <laughs> so basically, you don't want your daughter thinking. Cute. As long as they stay in line, eh, Mom? Why don't you cut the BS and say what you really mean, huh? This isn't about Ego's lesson plan. You're uncomfortable that, with the fact that she likes women. Well, guess what? That's none of your damn business. It's the 21st century, for crying out loud. The days of socially uh, acceptable homophobia are over. Of course they are. No one is here saying otherwise, right? A long and comfortable silence follows Cynthia's question. Vanessa looks at you with a frown that doesn't quite hide the vindictive gleam in her eyes. I'm sorry, Miss Day, but I hate to accuse one of our valued teachers of endangering her students. But a PTA present, I must secede to the wishes of the group. I'll schedule a meeting with Principal Tinsley this week to discuss whether Miss Matsunaga is a good fit for Bernhard, or whether she should be asked to resign. How about I shove my foot so f your ass, your tongue ties my shoelaces, seriously? When the meeting ends, Vanessa scoops up her possessions and is out the door before you have time to stand. Oh, no you don't. You chase her into the main foyer, practically running to catch up. How can you do this to Eco? She was around hot anger and something more complicated warring for control on her face. I'm not sure what you're accusing me of, Miss Day. 
You know damn well what I'm talking about. You turned that whole PTA against her, and for what? Are you really that bigoted? I knew you were a terrible person, but homophobe? You just keep finding new ways to surprise and disappoint me. You can believe whatever you want, Miss Day, but the plain truth is that you and Miss Matsunaga are troublemakers. It's my duty as a lawyer to expose the truth, and my duty as the PTA present to uphold in order to the school. Now, if you'll excuse me. She turns her back on you and starts walking away. You clench your fist, shaking with barely containable rage. That snake, it would feel so good to take her down the peg. Oh. Oh, really? Okay, I mean, why not? Don't worry, this won't negatively affect your custody case. I like how they have to point that out. It wouldn't really. Hey, you're not getting off that easy. Stride forward, cutting in front of Vanessa to force her to stop. Excuse me, but some of us have important meetings to- Uh-huh. Oh, you're not leaving until you hear what I have to say. Vanessa, you're a... Selfish, vindictive tyrant. You use your authority and influence to help people? You could, but instead, you use it to abuse and ruin anyone who dares defy you. You couldn't care less about Eco lets, lets your kids use Bunsen burners. You just care that the fact that she made you look bad. How dare... Did I say I was done? I am not done. What gives you the right to decide who belongs at the school? My daughter earned her place here and so did Eco. Hell, Eco is more way overqualified for this job. She could be teaching at a university or leading a research team somewhere. But no, she chose to work here because she cares about these kids and their education. Oh, and you think I don't care? Actually, I kinda do. I think you don't care about anything but yourself. No wonder. Thomas dumped you. You don't have any real friends. Oh... There should be a third option, since we paid for diamonds. Why not both? Well, that's extremely immature. Also, patently false. Oh, is it? Because from what I can tell, all you have are a bunch of psycho psychophants and sock -ups. Tell me, have you ever asked Tallulah how she's feeling? Or asked Hugo about his hobbies? Maybe given him a compliment. You know, like a friend would. And Essa takes a step back, as if you just slapped her. You... you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? Because your face says otherwise. Your face says deep down you know you haven't had a single meaningful relationship in your entire life. Take a step forward, causing Vanessa to instinctively step back again. You were feeling pretty confident earlier, huh? You thought you were finally gonna put me and Eco in our place and restore your control over the school. Well, guess what, V? That isn't gonna happen. Because... Even if I fail, someone else will come for you. Do you think I'm the only one that wants to see you taken down a few notches? As long as you keep treating everyone like garbage, someone will always be gunning for you. I just hope that either way, I'm there to see it happen. Take another step forward, getting right in Vanessa's face. I'm not scared of you, Vanessa. Never have been, never will be. But if you keep pushing me, I'll give you something to be scared of. Vanessa holds your gaze for a few more tense seconds and then looks away. I don't have time for this. Right, very important meaning. As a matter of fact, yes, goodbye. Without another word, she turns and stalks away, but not before you see the troubled look in her eyes. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Pixel Berry, I don't care. I'm so tired of redemption story. She's got a troubled look in her eyes, and one day she's gonna break down, and I don't care anymore. See you around, V. I really don't. Continuing down the hall, you find yourself walking past Eco's classroom. You can see her through the window, sitting alone behind her desk. You know, you knock softly on the door to get Eco's attention. She gets up her usual confident stride, reduced to a glum shuffle as she moves to unlock the door. Hey, you just come from the PTA meeting? Yeah. They talk about me? Yeah. You give her the short version of the events, Nico sighs, leaning tiredly against the doorframe. Yep, that's uh, about what I expected. Thanks for sticking up for me. It's good to know I at least have one friend in the room. No, you technically have two. There's Cynthia. Kind of. 
Of course I fought for you. I care about you. He goes to give a little smile. You don't know how much it helps to hear that. Good, because it's true. He goes on his running hand through their glossy hair. Honestly, I'm wondering if it's even worth the stress of fighting the PTA at this point. It's not like I couldn't find another job. Another job? But you love teaching here. The way you light up when you're teaching these kids. Eiko looks at the floor, a pain look on her face. It was never the plan to teach at Bernhardt forever, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't ready to leave. Stand there for a few seconds, not sure what to say as Eiko continues to stare at the ground. Are you gonna be alright? I have a bit of time before my shift, so I can stay and talk for a while. I really appreciate you coming by, but I don't know if I'd be very good company right now. Guts is back into her classroom. Following her gaze, you see a strange-looking machine laying in pieces on top of her desk. Are you working on the heart monitor today? Oh, no. That's an old radio I picked up at the flea market the other day, I'm trying to see if I can make it work. Her face softens a bit, her eyes seem to be looking at something far away. It's something I used to do with my family when I was little. It got me interested in engineering. Ah, hence your ability to repair stubborn vending machines. I had to work my way up to that, but yes, pretty much. Tinkering usually makes me feel better, but... I don't know, it's not quite the same by myself. I don't suppose fiddling around with vintage electronics is something you'd be interested in? I'll be go fix the radio to cheer her up, learn more about her past, and get closer to her in the process. Girl, you know I got your back. Ika's face lights up with eagerness you've come to know so well. Great, come on in then. Ika leads you over to the desk where a fabric-covered case lies open, revealing a mess of tarnished wires inside. Is this a radio? Yes, and it's probably from the late 30s or early 40s. It looks pretty good, but it won't turn on. Have you figured out what's wrong with it? Not yet, but the internet says it uh, to start by replacing some of the capacitors. You go hand you a pair of wire cutters. Here, if you want to cut these wires to take out the old capacitors, we can solder in new ones. Testing apart, teasing apart the old electronics, you carefully snip the indicator wires while Eco plugs in her soldering iron. So, did you do this a lot when you were little? Yes, my family was big into the open-ended learning thing. They always encouraged me to explore and experiment. My uncle used to own this little pawn shop in the city. People would bring in all kinds of weird junk. About once a week, he'd come over for dinner, bring along some old broken appliance or other. After we ate, we'd go to the workshop and take it apart. Wow. I wish my family done stuff like that. The most exciting thing we did after dinner was scrabble. Hey, don't knock Scrabble. Nothing beats the rush of playing one word across two triple word scores. Eco twists together the wires from the old and the new capacitors and fuses them together with a neatly placed drop of solder. Alright, there's one. Your turn. Um, I'm not sure you want me to do that. What if I mess it up? Then I'll be out a whole five dollars and eighty cents, and you'll have had a, a valuable learning experience. Okay, but if I burn the whole school down, I'm telling them who put the iron in my hand. Eko laughs, handing you the iron and the coil of sol solder. Here, use the iron to heat the wires, then touch the wires with the solder to so it melts, fusing them together. Okay, got it. First, I touch the iron to the wires. You hold the iron against the twisted uh, together wires. Nice. Now you want to fuse those wires together. Uh, fuse the wires. I touch the. I touch the solder to the wires. You touch the solder to the hot wires and watch a bead of molten metal drip until from the end, glooming onto the twisted wires. 
Nice, that should look like it'll be a really solid connection. Not bad. You want to do the rest of them? Uh, yeah, I think I got the hang of it. Enrico's direction, you solder the rest of the new capacitors in place. Now for the moment of truth. Ico closes up the case and switches the radio on, and a slow, soulful tune starts to play from the speaker. Oh my god, we did it and it works! Yes. Ico jumps up, pumping her fist into the air. Oh man, we got lucky. I thought I was going to have to futz with this thing for days. Lucky. Pretty sure it was uh, my sweet soldering skills that brought us to this victory. Ah, yes, forgive me. Soldering master for my grave insult. The soldering master will be merciful this time. Ego runs her hand along the radio's fabric case, her eyes going distant again. What's on your mind? I was just thinking about the first radio my uncle and I fixed up when I was about six years old. It uh, wasn't a nice one like this. It was just a plastic piece of junk so I could practice. It took us weeks to get the thing working. I got so frustrated. I bet. Weeks can seem like an eternity for a kid that young. It really did. I wanted to just throw the thing away, but my family wouldn't let me give up. They taught me that even when you can't see the solution, that doesn't mean it isn't there. You just have to keep looking. She sits down in her chair, resting her elbows on the desk. But I gotta admit, I really can't see the solution to this PTA thing. Maybe there isn't one after all. Well, maybe not yet, but that doesn't mean we should stop looking. He smiled, patting the top of the radio. Maybe we'll get lucky, huh? Oh yeah, maybe. Eco fiddles with the radio knobs, seemingly less than convinced. You step over to stand beside her and put a hand on her shoulder. Hey, come here. Eco tips her head back and you bend down and catch her lips in a kiss. Hmm. Closing her eyes, you lose yourself in the press of her mouth against yours. Her hand reaches up, trailing slender fingers along your jawline. A long moment later, you part and she smiles up at you. Trying to make me forget about my troubles. Maybe. Did it work? It didn't. Not work. You check your watch, sighing at the time. Ah, duty calls. Duty being a bunch of dirty pint glasses and unsliced limes. Well, then you must answer. Come on, I'll walk you out. As you leave the classroom, Miko pauses in the doorway. Hey! After a quick glance around the empty hallway, Eco leans in, planting a brief kiss, but a sweet kiss against your lips. What was that for? What? I need a reason now for being you, for charging into battle on behalf when, when no one else will. Of course, I'll be your champion anytime. We're going to figure out how to beat this, Eco. I promise. Ego nods, waving as you take your leave and letting a tentative smile show on her lit face. The next day at the boutique is a frenzied rush as dozens of customers flood the store to take advantage of the annual fall sale. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm afraid that coupon only applies to non-sale items. What? Where does it say any of that? Right here on the coupon, ma'am. Who actually reads any of that tiny writing? This is false advertising. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Customer pays for her purchases and then storms out and off. You let out a soft groan and rub your face with your hands and register next to you. Sally gives you a sympathetic glance. What business doesn't look at you and go, I'm sorry, you can't use coupon on sale items. What business? Seriously. Are you doing all right, dear? The fabulous fall sale is always a bit of a gauntlet, I'm afraid. I'm fine. It, uh, it, it's fine. I'm just a little worn out. Got a lot going on at home right now. My daughter's birthday's coming up next week. I want to do something special for her, but money's so tight right now. Oh, money isn't everything, love. I'm sure your little angel will be happy just to celebrate with her mom. I just wish I could afford something nice for Zoe. Things were back to normal. Zoe is being such a trooper. I just wish she didn't have to be. She deserves to be 
to just be a kid and have a worry-free birthday. Every kid does, and I'm certain you'll find a way to give it to her. Why don't you take a break from the register? The line's not too long at the moment. Alma can help me when she's uh, back from her lunch. Not ungratefully, you step back uh, from behind the counter. The bell on the front door jingles, and you turn to greet the new customers. Oh, great. Perfect. Guy enters the store, holding the door open for Tallulah. You try to step behind a dress rack, and Guy spots you immediately. Oh, look who it is. I didn't know you'd be working today. What are you doing here, Guy? Oh, I need a quarter uh, anniversary present for Faye. Tally here mentioned she was going to drop by to check out the sale, so I figured I'd tag along. Not that I make a habit of stopping sales. Where do you keep your scarves? I'd love to strangle you with one. Back corner next to the accessories. Lulu wanders off towards the back of the store and you start to turn away. Hey, wait up. I, uh, I need help finding something for Faye. Seriously. What are you really up to? Of all the stores in the whole town, you just happen to come in here for the one I work. Don't flatter yourself. I just know Faye shops here, okay? Mom, you like Faye, right? I just want to get her something nice. Sure, Faye's a sweetheart. It's you I don't like. I don't feel like helping. Look, there's a bunch of cute tops on the table over there. I'm sure you can find something in her size. Guy stares at you blankly. Do you know Faye's size? Ah, a little smaller than you, I guess. Oh, for the love of... Mm. You're about to storm off, but you catch a glimpse of Sally eyeing you curiously from her place at the register. Oh, Sally, don't give me shit right now. <laughs> really, Sally? I thought I, was, I thought I was supposed to take my break. This is my ex, okay? He's ruining my life. What the f do you want, Sally? Fine, come on. You lead Guy over to his play blouses and help him select a few from the pile. Okay, sure, that, uh, I'm sure that any of these would fit her. You can just pick out a color and what you, she like. You're not gonna tell me which one I should get? Talk about poor customer service. I will shove my- <sighs> Listen, guy, this is your gift. I gave you some options, but if I just pick out the gift, it's not really from you, is it? I'm the one paying for it, aren't I? The bells jingle again, and you look behind you to see Helma coming in through the front door. Alright, this has been great, but it is now officially my lunchtime. I'm gonna go lock myself in the break room, and you can... You hear a crash and a whirl around to see Guy standing over a couple of mannequins lying on the floor. Oops, sorry. Oh my god, Guy, what is wrong with you? It was an accident. Here, I can fix it. Guy fumbles ineffective ineffectually with the, one of the mannequins trying to stand it back up. Cursing under your breath, you stoop down to help him. There, now will you leave me alone, please? Hey, I said it was an accident. Sure it was. Fuming, you march towards the back of the store as you reach the door to the employee lounge. You nearly run into Lula on her way out. Oh! Excuse me, but this room is for employees only, you know. Like it says on the sign... I was trying to find the fitting rooms, but no one was around to help me. Rest assured, I'll be writing a review about the poor service in this place. <laughs> the poor service, because you can't read employees only, you illiterate piece of... Great, knock yourself out. Fitting rooms are over there. The little storms past you in a half, and you finally escape through the door to take a much-needed break from the madness. Mmm, boy, have I been there. <laughs> Hours later, you lock the boutique go doors and slump against them, exhausted. Good god, the horror. Hey, be proud of yourself. You just survived the, your first big sale. That's no easy feat. Don't speak too soon. I'm so exhausted I might curl up and die right here. And the last, wheeling over to pat you sympathetically on the shoulder. Better not take any chances, huh? I can finish closing on my own, and you have already worked overtime today. Ah, oh, Alma, you are a beautiful angel. I know. Now get out of here. 
After checking in with Sally, you grab your purse from the break room and head for the front doors. But as you step through the doorway, a piercing mechanical shriek sounds from either side. What the? Alm looks over, confused, as Sally emerges from the back. Gracious, what's going on? I don't know, the anti-theft alarm must be on the fritz. Sally walks over to you, brow wrinkled in confusion. Hmm, never gone off like that before. Did you pick up one of our display handbags by mistake? No, this is definitely mine. See, it has all my stuff and... Your words catch in your throat, a surge of cold dread fills your body as you stare at the glittering objects inside your purse. Oh... No, she didn't. I mean, I've been here. Not literally someone sending me up to steal from a store, but... Does it matter which item we pick right now? Seriously. Like, I don't know. This one looks pretty. Anyway, you look at Sally horrified. Sally, I didn't put these in here, I swear. Oh, Tara. You've been a model employee and I don't want to believe you would do something like this, but... Sally, please, I didn't... I'm afraid you're fired. Effective immediately. Okay. Okay. I hate you. <laughs> um, so long story short, one, if you please did enjoy, enjoy the video, please remember to like the video. Okay. Make sure to share it and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. Okay. Now for the rant, because I'm not going to do what I usually do, like, you know, saying go down below for links, but, oh man, okay, one, I am so tired, I'm so, so, so tired of this, so if you don't want to listen to my rant, which is about to be about this book, please leave, otherwise, here we go, one, hating someone because they're into the same gender is crap, you're a crap human being, they offend you in what way i i've never understood it people have accused me of being this way and it offended me because i am not a bigot i'm not against anyone i don't care what you do if you choose to go home and have a pillow with a hentai girl in it i give zero shit like as long as you're not doing it on my lawn i don't care and that should be the mentality for the whole entire world. Like, whatever you choose to do in the confines of your home or, you know, in your life is your business. As long as you're not forcing everyone to participate or forcing people to watch, you know, things like that. No one should care ever. I don't understand it. If you have an employer that is doing discrimination against you for whatever bloody reason... There are lawyers out there. There are law laws. There are more than enough people that will support you. I, for one, will support you. Secondly, yes, I have been there. I, I mean, lo and behold, if you've been on this channel long enough, you know me and you know the issue that I have with a group of individuals that, for whatever reason, they don't have lives. They come, and I pointed out in the prior video that I just uploaded today, and I'll point it out now, and I'll point it out in the comment section below, and I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the likes, too, um, and the dislikes, because f them, okay, and their little petty bullshit, but I have a group of individuals that every time I upload a video, they literally and figuratively will dislike it within the first minute to five minutes, because they have no lives. They don't ever give you criticism, they don't ever give you a reason, and it's it's as of lately, because I turned the likes back on, they've been more, you know, rabid because they have no lives. They really have no lives. And it's kind of sad, it's kind of cute, I pity them, you know, that they, they spend their days coming to my videos and, and giving me clicks, thank you, that helps me out more than anything. You know, you can't dislike or like my video without clicking on it, so all you are is bringing my algorithm up. You're an idiot. So, like, if you were to doom me, you would not click on the video and you would not rank it. Because then it lowers the analytics. You f***ing idiot. 
with that being said, I've had the group of individuals who have accused me of being a homophobe. I've had the group of individuals who have accused me of being racist with no facts whatsoever and with no bearing and with nothing. Okay. They've done this for years. And literally one of them in their discord is called heterophobia. And they talk about how they are anti straight people. Hi, I'm straight. It makes sense now, doesn't it? I'm also, you know, not whatever, you know, race they are. Which anymore, people are even asking, like, what race really are they, since they make such a big deal and yet they keep flip-flopping, and yeah, it's just a big to-do. I'm not gonna rant too long about this, it's just something that could take days to explain. It, they are just, this, this individual, let alone the individual that leads this little handful of misfits, is just a cluster, f long story short, to set someone up, or to try and accuse people, or to hurt people, you know, based on just your bullshit, which Guy did it in this one, Vanessa did it, you know, the PTA meeting did it. it they're just a, a, a cluster, f okay? You know the word, and moving on, you're all pieces of garbage. I wish, I, I honestly would rather you be put on the death penalty than like half of the people that have been wrongly accused of it, let alone half the people who are on the death penalty. Because you just ruin humanity. Like, that's, that's my belief in it. Your, your viscous, venomous, toxic nature will ruin humanity more so than, than one individual who did one thing. Like, that, you're just a piece of crap who will, unfortunately, due to medical technology and science, will live on this planet for, God help us, at least a minimum of 50 or so years. Like... There are a lot of young people that I wish were still alive to this day that unfortunately dropped dead during football, track, soccer, etc. that dropped dead from heart attacks and everything. I would rather have them back and I would rather have these toxic pieces of crap dead. That's how I feel. But moving on. Without further ado, thank you for indulging me in this rant. If you stayed at the end, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.